In this video, we will talk about average velocity and instantaneous velocity. So I want to begin with the following scenario. You're driving from San Francisco to San Diego. You look at the speedometer, which tells you your speed at that instant. But when you freeze at this instant, there's no movement. So does that mean that your instantaneous velocity or your velocity right at that particular instant is just zero miles an hour? So in other words, this is asking, what is meant by your velocity right at that instant? Because at that instant, if we really freeze it to what's happening at that instant, you're not moving. So I want you to pause the video and think about this for about a minute and how you might respond to this. Four, three, two, one. Pause the video and think about this for about a minute. If you're a little bit confused or not totally sure, that is absolutely okay. I just want you to be thinking about this. All right, let's, let's talk about it together and see if we can come up with an idea. So this question is a bit of a paradox because when we ask, well, what is the velocity right at that instant? At that instant, you know, if we really freeze it down, we're not moving. So how do we measure this instantaneous velocity? And the idea is going to be, we are going to use what's called the average velocity. The average velocity measures how much your position changes over some time interval. And we're going to measure average velocity over smaller and smaller, over smaller and smaller time intervals. So maybe I'll measure my average velocity over a one second time interval and then maybe half a second and then a quarter second smaller and smaller time intervals. And by doing that, we'll be able to estimate the instantaneous velocity. All right, so let's apply this idea to an example. So following the setup in that scenario above, the example says that your distance traveled S of t in miles after t hours is given in the table below. So the top row has different t values like 5 hours of traveling, 6 hours of traveling, 5.1 hours of traveling. And then the bottom row keeps track of S of t, how much we've traveled after that amount of time. So we've traveled 325 miles after 5 hours or 402 miles of after six hours of traveling. And then the question asks, what is the average velocity on the following time intervals? So let's first define average velocity. So if our object, if we have an object that has position function s of t at time t, the average velocity of the object on the time interval from A to B is measured as the change in position, which I'll call change in S, over the change in time. So the change in position is going to be S of B, the position at the final time, minus S of A, the position at the initial time, over the final time b minus the initial time a. So let's apply this to each of these time intervals. So for part one of this example, I want the average velocity on the interval from five to six. So I need s of six minus s of five, that's my change in position, over the change in time, which is gonna be six minus five. And using my table, I see s of six is 402 and s of 5 is 325. The denominator is 1. And there's units for everything here. The units of time in this problem were hours. And the units of position on the numerator were miles. So simplifying this, we get 77 miles an hour. All right, let's do it for part 2. All righty, part 2. So now I have a smaller time interval. I need s of 5.1 minus s of 5 over the change in time, 5.1 minus 5. 
If I plug in these values, S of 5.1 is 332.07, S of 5 is 325, and the denominator, once I subtract those two numbers, is 0 0.1. And if I work out what this is, we get 70.7. The units, again, are miles per hour. And that seems reasonable. This uh, miles per hour is a, is a unit of, of velocity or of speed. Let's do it now on the third, third part, this third time interval. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to do uh, the position at 5.01, when that's t, that I'm going to jump straight to 325.7007 minus the initial position, 325 over the change in time, which will be 5.01 minus 5. And working out what that is, we get 70.07 miles per hour. So let's box each of these. These were our average velocities. So looking at these values, we've made the time interval get smaller and smaller and smaller. From 5 to 6, and then 5 to 5.1, and then 5 to 5.01, it's getting really, really small. And notice that these velocities that we're getting seem to be getting super close to 70. So writing that down, the average velocities that we got let me just abbreviate, average velocities seem to approach, they seem to approach 70 miles an hour. I can't be absolutely sure that they're actually getting there, but that seems a good to be a good estimate. So this is what we will estimate. We will estimate this as the the instantaneous velocity. So that is our idea for how we are going to estimate that instantaneous velocity. We compute average velocities on smaller and smaller and smaller time intervals. All right, in terms of our goals for this section, we finished goal one, talking about how we can use average velocities to estimate instantaneous velocity.